Hello again, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to do another uh, painting in the series of the Collaborator Challenges. This is Collaborator Challenge number six. And uh, there are only three of us working on it this time. Uh, one of our collaborators decided to drop out for a while. So uh, the three of us are going to do this. Uh, this will be Clive Powell and Jason Bowen, both from the UK and myself here from the United States. And uh, so uh, what we're doing today is a Christmas scene of some sort. We were allowed to pick our own subject and uh, do a nice little Christmas scene. So this time of year is the time we uh, typically start thinking about these things. And uh, so we're doing a scene. I have a, uh, a simple sketch here that I found uh, that I uh, drew up and I have a, uh, done a, a uh, value study. Uh, just a little just a little bungalow nestled in the in the woods, kind of in the, in the mountains, and uh, snow coming down. And we're going to see if we can make a nice little snow scene out of this. And uh, I already have the sketch done. Uh, by the time you see this, the sketch will be on my website, <clears throat> and you can go out and pick it up and uh, use it as your template. And uh, the also you see some dark marks on there. I have uh, put on some. Uh, uh, it's called uh, Peebo Drawing Gum. I use an old old brush and I've just sort of uh, dotted in some areas that I want to keep white to show some snow coming down. So um, that's a, a nice technique for things like snow. Uh, I don't use that a lot, but uh, I certainly use it. This is a, an ideal application for it where we're going to have some <clears throat> snow coming down. And I want to keep that area clear. So um, I also want to uh, take you through the paints and the brushes. This is my usual palette here. Uh, I have my Sterling Edwards uh, palette and uh, I have my brushes here. I have my three uh, bristle brushes, short haired bristle, bristle brushes, a large, a medium, and a small. I may not use all those, but I have them available. I have my uh, nylon brushes, a one inch flat, half inch flat, uh, number uh, 12 round, number eight round, a number four round, and a number six rigger. Um, so again, I may not use all those brushes, but I have them available. I um, also have a great big flat uh, two inch nylon flat here. I may not use that either, but uh, I, that's the set of brushes that I have from the painter Sterling Edwards. You've heard me talk about him. I have my palette. Um, I have my, my uh, paints here. These are my uh, My Mary Blue paints, and I'll go around quickly to give you the name again. This is Neutral Tint, Primary Blue, Cyan. Ultramarine Blue, Ultraviolet, Crimson Lake, Primary Red Magenta, Cadmium Red, Burnt Sienna, Raw Sienna, Yellow Ochre, Cupric Green, Sap Green, Limon Yellow, Primary Yellow, Burnt Umber, Still to Grain Brown, and Auvignon orange. Uh, I have my palette changed a little bit. I moved my uh, magenta from here to here, my still to grain brown from there to there. I took out a couple colors. If you watched my last video, uh, <clears throat> I give uh, some explanation to the colors that I took out. I took two, uh, two colors out and just moved the rest of them around. So um, with that said, I think I want to make sure we're all lined up here. I got my uh, uh, can uh, paper lined up so you can see it. We're painting on 11 by 14 uh, Fabriano Artistico cold press paper and uh, 300 pound is nice it, it holds water well and it uh, it uh, doesn't buckle when you when you paint on it so uh, with that said I want to get started and uh, wet this down just a little um, I'm, I'm thinking that the top is going to be dark if you notice my uh, my um, sample uh, value map the uh, this is a nocturnal scene so it's going to be dark the sky is going to be dark and uh, I have these places here left out that I'm going to uh, actually um, save for uh, the snow and uh, so I'm just going to mix myself up some dark colors here to start with the sky I think I'm going to try to do this uh, mostly uh, wet on dry and see how that works. Uh, so I'm trying to mix up a sort of a dark sky color here. I'm using cyan. I'm using my 
little bit of a Lizarin, not a Lizarin, but a Crimson Lake. Um, a little bit of neutral tint. Uh, I want to get a good dark color here. I'm going to put a little of this Cupric Green in it. The best way to get a really dark color is to add your, your reds, greens, blues, and even a little of this neutral tint, and you can really get some really dark colors. Um, this may not be dark enough, but we can always go back over it. So I'm going to uh, start here with just putting in this dark sky here. This is wet on dry. I know I'm going to have to come back and darken it, but um, that'll be okay. Okay, how's that looking? That's an uh, interesting dark color. We'll uh, add a little more dark to it and uh, see if we can get it even darker here in some areas, especially at the tops. Um, I'll make sure I don't have too thin a paint. I don't want to get blossoms. The sky is always a problem if you put too much water over over it. You have to kind of be careful you'll get blossoms. I'm using this oh, one and a half inch bristle brush. Okay. Um, there might be a few places where we could have some lighter streaks. I may just take out a little of that, see if it lightens up a little in some areas. Down here where the mountains are, I'm going to lighten it up just a, a touch. Top of those mountains. Okay. Now let's step in here and see if we can get some uh, mountain color in the distance. Matter of fact, I don't think I want to use this brush. I think I'm going to use my flat. Get a little sharper edges here. I'm using ultraviolet here. Uh, let's lay this brush down and pick up my number one flat here. And see if we can come up in here. A little darker, a little more paint, a little less water. See, this is uh, no water in here. Paper's really dry. Adding just a little bits of water here and there to get the paint to move. There he is here, I'm going to leave for some trees. I'm painting around some trees now that are going to be in here. I'll try to put in a few little birch trees here if I can. OK. 
Okay. It's a little bit of a blossom right there. Let's see if I can take some of that out. And around a couple chimneys here. Soften this off. I'll put some more. Okay, a lot of background done there already. Background, middle ground very fast. Okay. All right. back here and check this. Still pretty wet up there. I better stay out of there. I'll make a make blossoms that I don't want in that sky. Okay. Um, let's go down here and look in the foreground a little bit and see if we can uh, work in that area while the upper area is drying. I may have to stop and dry that just to uh, <clears throat> make sure I don't overpaint some stuff there. Let me clean out a little area here in my palette. Um, let's see here. Um, I got these windows. These I'm going to have some light coming out of these windows. Some bright yellow. Um, I'm gonna, maybe I'll put some of that in right now to uh, make sure I don't forget where my bright lights are. Sort of a bit of an orangish glow here. Um, I think that brush is too big even. Like right in here, we've got Okay, and those are going to put some reflections out here on the snow. So let's just sort of put some of that out here right now, just get some of that color in. See how that looks. Uh, maybe we'll even 
even have so we really got some life going on put one back here maybe okay so let's let that sit and dry a little bit okay This house is really lit up, lit up. Okay. Maybe just a little over here. Okay. I think I'm going to stop and dry this, folks. It's uh, still too wet to uh, put in my... I want to put trees and some other things here over that background, and it's a little bit too wet. So I'm going to get my dryer out, hair dryer, and I'm going to turn my microphone off <clears throat> so I don't blow your ears out. Okay, I should be back. Still feels warm, so I believe that's dry. If it feels cool, it means there's still water in it. If it's about the temperature hand or room temperature, uh, it means it's fairly dry. Test it with the back, not the front. You have more oil on the front of your fingers than you do the back. All right, let's see. I'm going to see if I can put in a, pop in a few of these um, pine trees now. Let's see if I can go back and get some pick up some dark, pick up some sap green a couple of greens and throw in some uh, these darker colors here. I want this to be fairly dark because it's got to be darker than the sky, hopefully. Um, and it's going to go, at least one of them is going to go way off the page here. I'll see how this works here. Right in here, we're going to... Very dark. Keep it dark. Just using a one inch flat here. It's going to come all the way down, get bigger and bigger as it comes down. This back behind the house here. That's 
one tree. Put a few more in here, see if we can get maybe another one in here like this. Okay, so we're just making these little dark trees here that uh, something like that. Try to make them different. Try to make them so they stand out and look slightly different. Put some dark trunks in the middle of them if you can get a really dark. Vertical lines in there, like that. Okay, uh, that's a, not too bad. Those are fairly dark. They're certainly darker than the sky behind, which is what I was trying to do. A few accents even make some darker places underneath here, if we can do that. Okay, all right, that's a nice little stand of trees there. Um, over here on the other side, I want to echo that color a little bit, so I want to come over here and sort of pop in a few dark things over here that look like they're some sort of tree, some sort of something going on over here on this side. Gonna feather some of that out so it's not too too descript, but we do have some all right, so we got that color echoed over here on this side. So that's good enough, I think. Making good time on this painting. Um, all right, let's look at this roof now. I see a spot where I should have some of this ultraviolet. <clears throat> now is going to be sort of grayed down a little bit dirty I guess I'm going to use my neutral tints here and see if I can pick up some color in this roof and uh,
Just kind of painting over where the snow is going to be here. Leave some white spots for some snow. And then this area over here is going to be maybe a little darker. Okay. Come back in here and put a little bit of darker shadow under this eave. Over here. We're going to uh, decorate this with a little lights and stuff up there too. We're going to put some colors in there if I don't forget. Okay, step back, take a look. Okay, coming along nicely. But maybe just a little tone of some kind in this. For the front of the building is a little bit. We'll try a little bit of this. See what that looks like. It's got a little bit of a, just a touch of this cat orange and um, tint. Let's see what that does. Just change the color a little bit. Darken this side up just a little over here on the left. Okay. Okay. 
Some room for shutters over here. Okay. Side over here might be just a little bit grayer or bluer. Okay. Get this little orange color. Let's pick up some, put these chimneys in. Okay, a little darker. Okay. A little bit of that color over here just to sort of tie things together a little bit. <clears throat> Maybe even some under here. All right, um, I see a little bit of a difference of value in my roof line here. You can't quite tell where. To separate. So we'll just feather that in, make a little graded wash out of it, a little darker. Something like that. And even over here on this area, maybe. A bit darker here, just clear water, blend it out. Okay, that helps highlight that edge a little bit. Okay, now. All right. <clears throat> now, take a look, slow down, step back. Uh, 
it's drying out pretty well. Um, I think maybe I'm going to put just a little darker highlight on this chimney here. Both sides need a little bit of, make it a little more distinct. Okay, now we're going to put some trees in here going up. I'm going to try to see if I can make these trees into something that looks like uh, birch trees. I haven't done birch trees very much, so I don't know if it'll work or not, but we'll see. May not look like birch trees at all, for all I know. I may tend to have these little marks that are horizontal, like that, and here we get some, so I'm just using the corner of this brush, sort of squiggling in some things that look like they might be some of the bark coming off, and some of the bark shadows under there. left myself some room between these so that they do stand out a little bit. Okay, and then up here we're going to just sort of continue them on up. Something like that. As they get darker. Okay, now we we'll start pick up our, I'm going to get my rigger brush here and start seeing if I can pop in some dark, um, more tree trunks and things back here, more trees. Just using the uh, this long <clears throat> bristles on this rigger and just sort of pulling up. Over here, we've got some more trees coming up. A lot of them coming back here. Just little jaggedy lines, jaggedy. Oh, there's a lot of woods behind this cabin, nestled down in this little valley covered with snow. Over 
here we got some more all right Some of my browns now. This little still to green, <clears throat> still to green brown. It's a beautiful color. Um, we're gonna see if we can pop in a few of these foreground trees in here. He's still using this this rigger um, somewhere. Here we're gonna have some. Bigger trees, fatter trees. Take those things right off the top of the page here. Okay, now let's see here. Over here on these birch trees, I want to put in some more little branches that sort of stick out. color I'm using on the other side. Dry brush, coming down, minimal paint. here. 
Okay, there. Um, There's some. There's a window there I left out. I guess it's got some... Put in a few little things that look like snow banks here um, around the bottom of these trees. These trees look like they're glued on. You don't like that. Let me see. I'm gonna pull water there first just to soften the bottoms so I can get them sort of blend together, even over here. <coughs> the way that's looking in there. Trying to show some roundedness on this uh, hill. And uh, rough texture here and there, soft texture. Water, clear water. See if I can put in these little shutters. There's some shutters on here that I want to highlight. I don't know what color to make them, but just try this and see what happens.
All right, <clears throat> now step back, take a look. I'm gonna put some uh, Christmas lights in there. I'm gonna put in some, get my, uh, get this bristle brush here and see if we can put in some uh, things that look like weeds and stuff in the foreground here. This is good for weeds. A little orange here, Let's see if we can something like that. some over here something like that a few more like that all right now some of this white in here a little bit okay now we've got, we want to put in some Christmas lights here. Give myself a little bit of room here in the palette to work. And let's go back and get some of these bright colors here, like yellows and reds pop in some little red magenta lights here. Come back and pick up some bright yellows. It may be hard <clears throat> for you to even see. I don't know if you can even see that on the camera or not, but popping in some colors here that make it look like we got lights on this around the perimeter of this house. At least that's the way we decorate them here in the US generally. Pop in some bright reds in there. About some bright blues, maybe. I don't know.
certainly decorated. I don't know if they get to the house or not with all the snow, but certainly has. Okay, now we've got all this snow in here. I think I'm going to have to dry this thing again, make sure I don't have any problems. this we've got that uh, drawing gum on here and uh, one way to get it off is to use something like a kneaded eraser sort of come back and start picking it up also picking up a little paint by the way The only way to get this stuff off is to use this some sort of a kneaded eraser. You can use your hand. Uh, so you have some more. Okay, now. Oh, I've got a lot of splotches here that look like snow. I may take a little more of that off after I finish, but uh, right now I want to see if, try another little exper experiment here. <clears throat> I've got some white, uh, Chinese white. Um, it's an opaque color which true transparent watercolorists would never use. We'll just see what happens if I can touch a little bit on maybe these boughs of these uh, trees here and just see if I can pop a little snow-like things on here. So I would put that on top. And uh, it's probably hard for you to see that, be my guess. But it is going on, it's kind of going on a little bit gray because it's not quite as opaque as I thought it was. But we'll put some on here, different spots. Something like that to help make the, look like these trees do have some snow on them. Something like that. I have to stop here very shortly, but the idea is to get that on there and let it look like there's some snow laying on these branches. connected 
together a little bit so that it doesn't look like they're, these are glued on either. All right, let's see here, I think. Other than maybe just a little bit of, a little bit of darkening of the lower corners. the right amount of okay it darkens those corners just slightly all right I think maybe that's gonna do it for me here. Um, <clears throat> hope you like this little little painting. And let me zoom back here and uh, say thank you for watching. And I hope you like this. Hope you give it a try. And uh, let me know how you do. Um, make sure you check out my collaborators' uh, channels. I'll have them posted down below so you can know how to get to their. Uh, Christmas scene. And uh, I think that's all I want to ask you other than uh, subscribe. If you're not a subscriber, check me out on my website, check my cell phone, check me on Facebook. And uh, be glad to uh, give you any answer, any questions you might have. If you uh, ask me about them, I'll try to answer them very promptly. And uh, so until I see you again, that's Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Goodbye.